What's up everyone? All right, so here we are, third day of January, second green day in a row. Well, actually, um, the hot streak is a little longer than that. I'd have to pull out my December calendar, but uh, in any case, another green day, up 1,700 bucks this morning, taking three trades straight off the watch list. Made the watch list pre-market between 9, 9.15. By 9.30, the bell's ringing. I've got the three stocks I'm already watching. Boom, I take trades on one, two, three, 1,700 bucks by 10 a.m. and that's it, I'm done. I don't think we're in home run type of markets right now. It's still about base hits, but these base hits are adding up. 2,000 yesterday, 1,700 today, and we'll see what I can do tomorrow. All right, so any questions on today's recap, uh, put them below. I'll come back through and answer them later this afternoon, and I'll see you guys first thing tomorrow morning. All right, everyone. So uh, we're going to do our midday market recap here, go over the trades from this morning. Uh, today, I took three trades straight off the watch list, and I'm going to finish the morning up $1,703.30, which is uh, not too bad. So second green day of the year. I'm going to write it in my calendar, make it official. Day two plus $1,703.30. So today, um, you know, again, I still think we're in kind of a $1,500 to $2,000 a day type of market. It's not uh, what I would really call home run trading. This is uh, more of base hit trading, but these base hits certainly add up. Now I'm up $3,700 on the month, and, you know, first goal will be $10,000, and then $15,000, $20,000, you know, just kind of continuing to make progress. These are small steps, but they're small steps uh, forward at the least. So this morning, um, you know, starts the same as any other day. It's kind of, you know, broken record in a way because it's really just sitting down and doing the same thing every day in the sense of we open up our gap scanner and look at the stocks uh, that are opening higher. Now we've got, you can see the top 10 stocks. These are the ones that are sort of the most significant to look at. They are really exceeding the standard deviation of the market. The overall market, in fact, um, was gapping down overnight. So some news out overnight, markets gapping down a little bit, overall market is dipping a little bit. Um, and that doesn't really matter for um, these stocks. These are bucking the overall trend and moving up. So why is that? Well, generally speaking, it's because there's some type of news. So CHFS, this one um, gapping up on dividends, but only four shares of volume, so really nothing there. Next one down, KTOV, gapping up 65%. I mean, this stock was at 80 cents yesterday and is at $1.19 right now. Um, they have a new deal that they've signed, a uh, distribution agreement, which uh, is good. I was not super, super interested in it, mostly because I don't do as well under $2. You know, I, I do... It's, it's not that I don't make money on stocks under two. I do. I just don't make as much as I do on stocks between $2 and $10. $2 and $6 is sort of my real wheelhouse of where I make the most money. So, you know, that I kind of want to find a stock that's really in my wheelhouse first. And then if I can't, then I'll kind of look out at the others. So KTOV ended up not really getting the top of the list here for me because there were a couple others that looked better. Um, as it turns out, it really didn't do that much. Um, a break of pre-market highs would have been an entry at about $1.29, and it hit only $1.34. So really only up $0.05 cents per share, um, just not enough to really make much money on. Next one down, ALQA. And you'll notice that I traded this one and made $203 on it. So ALQA had news out. Uh, pre-market, it had a pre-market high of $2.90, as you can see right here. It pulled back, it then squeezed up to a sort of pre-market pivot of $2.75, which I'll mark right here. So $2.75 was that pivot. I, on this one, um, was a little cautious knowing that the last day it gapped up, it sold off this red candle here. Um, but I did take a stab on it out of the gates. So I'll sort my trades here. Um, let's see. There we go. So I took two trades, two buy orders at 275 and 277. 
This was anticipating a break of the pre-market highs uh, or the pre-market pivot of 75. And then once the break uh, happened, I went ahead and added another um, 3,000 shares. So I had 6,000 shares at an average price of 276. It popped up to a high here, as you can see, of 285. And I quickly took some profit off the table at 281. So at 281, I was taking five cents off the table of 3,000 shares, that's 150 bucks. So, you know, getting myself green. Now on these types of trades, within even two to three seconds, we typically expect a retest of the pre-market high. That's how fast these stocks can move out of the gates. So the fact that it was only at, you know, 281, I was like, all right, I gotta start reducing my risk. If it had squeezed right up to 290, I might not have sold any of it. I might have instead even added to the position because now it's moving and it's really proving itself. Uh, but in this case, I took some profit off the table at 81 and 82 and sold the rest at 78 and the balance at 66, which I lost $75 on. Now I got a little distracted because I ended up quickly jumping into ADIL while I was still holding ALQA. So the way I set up my um, uh, pr trading platform here pre-market is I have the two stocks, three stocks in each one of the level two windows. And so I'm in ALQA and then down here I see the other one squeezing up. And so I quickly jump over and press the buy button, boom, boom. So AL, uh, ADIL uh, was also on our watch list this morning, not because it was a gapper, you can see here, this actually was not on uh, the gap scanner right here. However, uh, it was one that we were watching yesterday and, um, and trading, and it had squeezed up to a high of 650 after uh, just going into the close and held that level after hours, uh, consolidating here just under the half dollar of 650. So I wanted to buy this at 650. Well, the, the bell rang and it ended up squeezing up a little bit without me but uh, being pretty confident that it was gonna retest $7 and then it had room um, on the daily chart all the way up to 745, I went ahead and jumped in it at, uh, let's see, uh, 662 and 665. I got a partial fill on this, so I had only 4,500 shares. I then sold the rest of ALQA so I could focus just on this one. It ended up hitting a high of 694, but then coming all the way back down to break even. So I said, well, I've got 4,500 shares. I better reduce my risk and sell half of it uh, break even and just, you know, whatever. It's better to be break even than be at a loss. And so I sold the rest of it at 72 and 59 and actually lost about $90 on that first trade, which was disappointing because it squeezed all the way up to 94 but then it came back down and what we had here at 75 was a 15,000 share seller. So 15,000 share seller sitting at 675 and I thought, well, you know, that's either someone trying to take profit or a short seller, but doesn't seem like it wants to move so uh, or break that level, so I'm just going to stop out. It dips down to 650. And at that point it could have also just gone all the way back down to low a day 625. So stopping out was the right move. It then curls back up and I'm watching that 75 level, the 15,000 share seller, and it goes 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and boom, boom, I punch the order twice for 6,000 shares at 75, trying to scalp the break of 75, expecting an immediate retest of high of day, and that's exactly what happened. We got the move here up to $7.18, and I was selling into the squeeze taking a little profit, a little profit, a little profit, and selling, um, I guess, the rest at 99, adding back at 709, getting a partial fill at 717. It then dips all the way back down to 75 right here. And then as it curls back up on this one minute candle to 715, I was getting back out on the ask at 709 and 77. So I actually, on this trade, um, from 75 up to seven made about um, $990, getting me from down 90 to up 890. And then uh, actually I made about a thousand and then on this trade here, I lost uh, just a little bit, but not, not much. From 709, 3000 shares selling it around 705, 
piecing out, you know, selling small pieces just to unwind the position on the ask to try to get the best price. So not the easiest trade in the world, but um, you know, green is good. And this one's been pretty volatile as you can see, but with volatility comes opportunity. So, um, you know, Chris is one of our um, students who's been um, just getting into the classes. And I know he took a couple trades on um, each of these stocks this morning. He's still trading in the SIM and he was red on um, all three. And so he was feeling, you know, a little frustrated as we probably all um, do as, you know, beginner traders who, um, you know, have a day where you're red. And so what I said to him, I said, don't beat yourself up. Uh, you know, the fact that you're red is not that big of a deal as a beginner trader. What you can see is the fact that within each of these stocks was opportunity. And for me, on a day when I'm red, it's a reminder that as quickly as I lost money, I could have made money if I was on the opposite side of the trade or if I had a better entry. One of the challenges with um, really uh, all of these stocks is uh, getting in and out quickly. And so one of the things that I always try to do is I always try well, I always buy the ask. So if I want to get in a stock like ALQA, I'm going to buy it right here at 37.38. I'm not going to buy at the bid because I won't get filled. But then I also try to sell on the ask. So I'll put an order, you know, if it's at 37, I'll put the order right at 37 to sell at that price to try to get the best price. Because if I sell at 35, I'm losing two cents per share on 3,000 shares, that's 60 bucks. At the same time, if I don't get filled on the ask within 20 or 30 seconds, I'm usually going to cancel the order and hit the bid because it's more important that I do lock up profit. Um, now, on some of these stocks, the, the biggest issue is that you've got a spread. So here, the spread is 58 by 65. You know, that's a seven cent spread, but there's only 200 shares uh, of a buyer at 58. So if I press the sell button at 58, I might get filled at 51 and 49 and maybe even 48. So in those cases, I'm going to be much more inclined to try to sell on the ask at 65. And what I might even do is I might put an order at 60 and press sell to try to cut in between uh, the spread or maybe 62. Now doing that quickly with your manual orders is not easy. Um, if I put an order between the spread, I'm always going to use a hidden order. That way it won't display. Uh, I believe my orders automatically route uh, as hidden. Uh, that way, you know, if you try to cut between the bid and the ask and you're selling 5,000 shares, all of a sudden it's going to show 5,000 shares for sale at 60. And the market, people are going to see that's weakness because someone's cutting in. So what you're able to do is use a hidden order. You can put the order between the spread. If someone buys at 65, they're going to get a better fill because they're going to buy end up buying your shares at 62 and you're able to unwind the position. So it's kind of a win win in that sense. Uh, but, you know, in this case, I was actually just selling at the ask uh, small, you know, small orders and then hitting the bid when I wasn't able to fill on the ask. OK, so that was ADIL. And then uh, the third trade um, was BTAI. And just going back to ADIL. You know, the entry here at 75 was, it was very precise. I mean, I knew the price that I wanted to get in to the penny. I wanted to get in at 675. If I'd gotten in at 680 or 685, you know, with 6,000 shares, I would have been getting in $600 higher than I wanted to. And since I'm only up $890, you can see that the profit there, um, you know, it, it, it really does make make a difference even down to the penny of getting the right entry. So, you know, my first entry at 62, I actually was paying 10 cents more than I wanted because I wanted to get in this at 50, but I thought it had the potential to get to seven. And I was right because it did squeeze up 30 cents and unfortunately just didn't hold that level. And instead of taking the profit when I was up 20, 30 cents, I held it thinking that maybe it would break over seven maybe squeeze up to 725, 750, and, and actually end up being a home run. And I didn't take the base hit when I had it. So the first trade ended up being break even. And then on the second, I was that much faster just to take my profit and try to get green. So the third one today that was on the watch list was BTAI. This was on the gap scanner, gapping up 28%. Uh, Pre-market high was $4.50, uh, 455 actually. And I wanted to be a buyer on this one at 455. That's where I was really wanting to get in. 
Uh, it had a headline this morning. So I had this one on watch right down here, BTAI, and I had my order ready to go, I believe at like 75. I put it at 75 because at one point pre-market, the spread showed 455 by 479, even though no one actually pressed the buy button at 79, it, it looked really strong. It looked like it was gonna move up. So on this one, um, I had the order ready and then it all of a sudden squeezes up here to 77. I see it squeezing up. I want to punch the buy order to get in for the break over $5, but it just rips without me and I end up uh, chasing it. As I see it squeezing higher, I notice uh, the red bars here on the level two, as you can see, uh, indicating that it's getting close to being halted on a circuit breaker. And so I go ahead and jump in at 29. I have another order to double going into the halt. It doesn't get filled. I sell coming out of the halt at 46, 60, and 64. It ends up hitting a high of 83, 84, uh, which was a pretty nice move overall. And I could have even scalped it here from 66 up to 84. But you know, at this point in the day, I was kind of feeling like, you know what? I've had one loss today, a small loss, but I did have one loser, and I just don't feel like um, you know the market is is really hot right now. I think I need to be a little more conservative, so I'm just gonna uh, hold my position, take my profit when it feels right, and and so that's what I did. So ended up making 600 bucks on that, which was okay. And then the last one that I noticed was A E Y E, and I actually uh, put out an order to try to short it. Um, off of this spike here, uh, but I, I didn't get filled and it ended up uh, coming coming back down, um, but without me. So this one just kind of popped up. I didn't trust it, but the spread was so big. I didn't want to hit the bid on the short. And so I didn't end up getting filled. So anyways, that's fine. Uh, so three stocks I traded, four trades, three winners, uh, $1,703.30. So a pretty solid day. Um, today is actually the first day in probably six months where I did get my buying power. I did get an order rejected due to insufficient buying power. That was on ADIL right here. Um, I think I tried to take another trade to go up to 9,000 shares um, when I was getting these partial fills and that order was uh, rejected. So today I only have um, $44,000 in the account uh, I was still holding some some shares of ALQA and ADIL uh, must have not been a marginable stock. So I wasn't able to use my buying power and, um, uh, you know, taking uh, 10,000 shares would have required um, $66,000 in buying power, which I didn't have. So the order gets rejected. Like if I tried to place an order here for 100,000 shares, I'm not going to do it, but uh, the order would get rejected for insufficient buying power. So it's just a pop-up that says don't have enough buying power and then you know you have to um, you know change the order or, or whatever. So um, you know I, I have a little bit of a smaller account here. I took money out at the end of the year. I took out about $170,000 in uh, December. So um, you know I, I'm now back to a little bit of a smaller account but Generally, it's not a big deal. This is the first trade that it's actually affected me on, but it's actually probably for the best in that particular case because um, I would have just ended up buying it higher and probably taking a loss on that first trade. So um, to place a hit in order, um, let's see. I believe on Sterling, you can go to expanded order entry, um, order quantity. You would have to type in here, or I think by default, it'll be hidden. Um, so if you don't type anything, I think by default, it's hidden. Um, ZVZZT. This is, um, well, there's no spread here. So yeah, I can't really do a test order. Um, let me just find maybe a, a stock here. Um, let's put like 100 shares as a test order. So this has a big spread. So if I put a test, well, I'll just put a test order here on this real quick for 100 shares at 28. It shouldn't show up. No, it did. So um, zero. Okay, so you got to type zero there. So now I have an order to buy at 28, but it's hidden. 
So you'd have to type zero. You'd have to go to expanded order entry and put zero as your share quantity. You can automatically hide your shares with your hotkeys um, in, in the settings when you, when you build them. But yeah, here I guess you've got to um, put in the zero. So if you use the expanded order entry, that might um, help a little bit. It just takes a little bit more room, but it's not that bad. All right, so anyways, that's it for me. I hope you guys have a good afternoon and we'll be back at it first thing tomorrow morning. We'll finish up the week hopefully with uh, one more uh, green day of trading. That would be a nice way to finish the week and I'll see you all um, back at it 9, 9.15. All right, see you guys in the morning. If you're still watching, you must have really enjoyed that video. So why not subscribe and get email alerts anytime I upload new content? Remember, when you subscribe, you become a member of the Warrior Trading family.